the things that I do love about the Bible. So let's get our Bibles open and uh, stay with me tonight. All you folks watching in other states and countries, get your Bible open. Follow along with us in these scriptures tonight as we'll be asking you to turn to several. Uh, we'll, we'll try not to get hung up too long, but when something's important, you got you got to study it. And that's all part about studying the Bible. So we got started in the book of uh, Colossians, and we had a good start. And uh, tonight we got down to verse number 15 last week, and uh, talking about the... Um, uh, the the great verse in 14 about the blood. And if you were not here, we made a, a strong emphasis on the word blood in Colossians 1, 14. And uh, if you have a Bible that does not have the word blood in Colossians 1, 14, you have the wrong Bible. I can tell you that right now. Uh, you do not want a Bible that takes out the, something of reference to the blood of Jesus anywhere, anytime. And I know what people say. They say, well, it had it in other places. Maybe it does. But why? Why would a, a group remove the word blood? Who, who, who can we think of that would want the, blood, the word blood moon? Wonder who. Uh, it ain't the Holy Ghost. I'll tell you that right now. I'll tell you, you got the blood. You have forgiven it, redemption through his blood in verse 14. Now look at verse 15 tonight, and we'll hurry and jump into this. Um, who is the image of the invisible God, that's Jesus Christ, the firstborn of every creature. Now, we talked a little bit about last week about that firstborn thing, about Jesus being the image of God. Uh, Jesus Christ is God's image. And uh, one day we'll get a body fashioned like his glorious body. God made Adam in his image start with. Adam lost it because he sinned. And there ain't nobody been in God's image since. You know, a lot of people say, we're all made in the image of God. No, we're fallen. We're fallen. Adam didn't look this bad, surely. And Eve, surely not. Uh, but uh, I'm, I'm just kidding. But we're all flawed. Adam and Eve had no flaws. We're flawed by sin. Now, one day, we're going to get a body that has no flaws. Your nose will be fixed. Your eye, everything will be fixed. And it won't ever even get sick or hurt or cry or sorrow or hurt. You, you'll have perfect everything. Everything will be perfect. And so uh, that, that's the image of the invisible. That means God, you can't see God, the firstborn of every creature. Now, uh, we'll, we'll, have to, we'll have to go. We'll have to move on here tonight because uh, we'll, we'll get, we could get hung up right there on that being the image of God to study the whole Bible. We talked about the kingdom of heaven, kingdom of God. Back there in verse 13. And got into all that. But you, you get hung up on that for weeks. We can study three weeks just on that one subject. So we can't. So we're going to move quickly here tonight. Look at verse number 16. For by him were all things created. That are in heaven. And that are in earth. Visible and invisible. I mean everything you can see. Everything you can't see. Whether they be thrones. Or dominions or principalities, or powers, all things were created by Him and for Him. Now, there you go. Here's, there's a loaded, loaded. Uh, what about, did God make all the dominions and principalities and powers? He absolutely did. Uh, people all the time say, did God make the devil? And the answer is, God made him, him made him perfect, and then he sinned by choice and became the devil. So God didn't make the devil the devil. God allowed him to become the devil. You got to get that straight. And then this thing about creation, you got to get this straight. Follow along with me. I get your Bible over there. Uh, verse 16 said, For by him were all things created. And you say, Well, who's that talking about? It's talking about Jesus. You say, uh, Did God create everything or did Jesus create everything? Now, the Bible teaches, I'm going to show it to you in the Bible. The Bible teaches that God created everything. And he did it by Christ. That's the biblical truth. I, I used to hear, and still hear a lot, well-meaning people, uh, say a lot of things, say, Jesus created everything. And I always had a little twinge in my stomach when I'd hear people say that. And I used to, one of the chick tracks said, Jesus Christ is the creator of the world. And the Bible don't say that. The Bible don't say Jesus created everything. It said God did it by him. You say, what's the difference? There's a lot of difference. 
You say, well, Jesus is God, wasn't he? Absolutely. Absolutely he was. Now, let's, let's study this just a little bit, and I'm going to show you what I mean. The Bible says, by him. God created everything, and he did it by Jesus Christ. You say, I thought Jesus is God. He is. But positionally, I, I heard a man one time, and he was praying, and he got a hold of that scripture over it says, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. And Abba is our dad for, for, for father or daddy. Daddy, where we get our word, daddy, from that word Abba. And he got down, and it bothered me. He's a good friend of mine. He got down, and he said, we just love you, Daddy Jesus. And we thank you, Daddy Jesus, for being so good to us, Daddy Jesus. And I remember something in me said, I don't sound right. I don't sound right. You say, well, uh, he's God, ain't he? Yeah, he is. But Jesus is not our father. Now, I'm going to you think now. One man said, well, Jesus is God, so Jesus created everything. Let me ask you one. Did God the Father die on the cross? No. Is, is, was Jesus God when he's on the cross? Yes. Did God the Father die? No. Uh, did the Holy Spirit die on the cross? No. No. Let's, let's study this a little bit. Get your Bible right. Get this straight, and you won't have to worry about it no more if you get it straight. Um, God the Father did not die on the cross. God the Son did. You say, well, I thought he wasn't. He's the second part of the Trinity. He's a person of the Godhead. Let me ask you one. Did you, if Jesus was God the Father, why did he say, my Father is greater than I? He didn't say that. He did say that. John 14, 28. He said, my Father is greater than I. He said, well, he meant positionally. Now, that's right. That's right. That's exactly what he meant. You remember when he told him disciples one time, he said, uh, uh, no man knows the day or the hour when the Son of Man comes. Not even me. He said he didn't even know it. He limited himself as the Son becomes subject to God the Father. And when Jesus died on the cross, he said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? So it wasn't God the Father dying on the cross. It was God the Son you say, well, well, he is God. That's exactly right. And that's a mystery and you can't understand it. Now, let's take your Bible, turn to the book of Hebrews. You got to follow me with this now. If you don't follow me, you'll, you'll know a lot of preachers are well-meaning and, they, and they, they mean well when they say this, but they, they just hadn't got it exactly three. They're unwilling or unable, and some of them fall into both those categories, unwilling or unable to see it. Uh, some of them are just unable. It's not... It's, I don't mean it's bad, just not bright enough. Uh, Hebrews chapter number 1, look at verse number 2. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 2. God, at sundry time, verse 1, the subject is God Almighty, the Father, hath in these last days spoken to us by His Son, Jesus, whom He hath appointed heir of all things, by whom, Jesus, also He, God, made the worlds. God made the worlds by Jesus Christ. John chapter 1. Turn to John chapter 1. And we'll hurry and get off of this. John chapter number 1. I'm, you say, well, Brother Danny, that's what the Jehovah Witness. No, the Jehovah Witnesses don't teach that. The Jehovah Witnesses teach that God created Jesus. And he didn't. He, when he was the firstborn of all, he's the first of all creation. That means God didn't start creating nothing without Jesus the Son. And he did it all by him. God made everything and did it by his Son. Look here, John chapter number 1, and look at verse 10. He was in the world, and the world was made by him. It don't say he made it. It said it's made by him. See there? See how meticulous that King James Bible is? That thing's sharper than a razor, brother. It said the same thing as it did in Hebrews. It was made by him. We say right there, it says he made it. It does not say he made it. It says God made it by him. In Hebrews. And the world knew him not. And it's the same I've given the illustration before. This don't do it justice. But if, if, I, if I make a pulpit. And I use my hand to build a birdhouse. I'm making it by my arm. Jesus Christ is God's right arm. 
Was, was he, uh, did he, was everything in creation involved Jesus Christ? Absolutely. Nothing was created that he wasn't, that God didn't do by him. Jesus Christ in Mark chapter number, let's see, I think I, Mark chapter 13 verse 19, Jesus said, from the beginning of creation, which God created, God created everything. And he did it by his son. That is the correct scriptural teaching. And I, I wouldn't split hairs or get mad at somebody. It just always bothered me when I'd hear people get up and say, Jesus Christ made everything. Jesus Christ created everything. It don't say that. It don't say he created nothing. It said God did it by him. You say, well, what's the difference? The difference, why didn't it was did God die on the cross? Was Jesus God? What's the difference? See, there is a difference. There is a difference in the way he administered the work of the, the, the Trinity. Uh, uh, you don't say Daddy Jesus. And Jesus said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Was he, if God died on the cross, who run things for three days while he was dead? You know, that's, that's ridiculous. That's, God the Father was in heaven, turned his back on God the Son. He was God the Son. The Holy Spirit is God, and the Holy Spirit didn't die for you neither. Uh, you, did, you don't ever say, thank you so much, Holy Spirit, for dying for me. You don't say that. See, it's, it's the terminology, and it's getting them in their proper right. I hope, I hope I'm not confusing you. You never, you never say, we're all here to worship the Holy Spirit. You say, why not? He's God, ain't he? He sure is. But you, you get what I'm saying? We don't come worship the Holy Spirit. We worship God. We worship God. And we worship Jesus Christ. We do not worship the Holy Spirit. That's right. He'll speak of Jesus. He'll brag on Jesus. So, um, not, not trying to nitpick, but Psalm 33, 6, you can get it when you, when you get time. Acts, um, look at Acts chapter 3. We get one more here. Acts chapter number 3. Thank you for that, Mr. Fletcher. I was actually thinking about that verse. Thank you for reminding me of that. Acts chapter 3 and verse 26. Look at Acts chapter 3 and verse 26. I'll show you a verse here, and I'll give you nothing to go with it. It's hard to figure sometimes. Unto you first, God, having raised up his son, Jesus. So who raised up Jesus? God did. God, the Father, having raised up his son, Jesus, sent him to bless you and turn him away from his iniquity. But you know what? There's a verse over in the Gospels where Jesus said, I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. He didn't say he did it. God raised him from the dead. But he's the first man that ever got up by his own power. Do what? See me. That's right. See me, see the Father. He was God. There's no doubt about it. But they had different, I, I want to say offices. I want to say, uh, the, the old preachers say persons. There's three persons of the Godhead. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. None of them, God the God the Holy Spirit is not less God than Jesus is God. He's just as much God as God is God. Jesus is just as much God as God is God. But you have three persons and do three different operations. Now, the, if you go too far that one way, you're, you're, you're agreeing with the Jehovah Witnesses and putting Jesus down on a lower level. That's wrong. That's wrong. I'm putting him down on a lower level. You say, what are you doing? I'm teaching the Bible. That's what I'm doing, I'm teaching the Bible. Just because you can't figure it out don't mean it ain't right. And the Bible don't say Jesus created anything. It said God did it by him. You say, what's the difference? Did, it, what, it, did God Jesus, father die on the cross? No. That, what's the difference? There's a big difference. Got it. All right, we got that. Let's move on. Now, uh, you know more than 90% of the preachers in this county right now, you got that. I ain't doing that to toot my own horn. I'm just... I just teach the Bible like it is. If I can't understand it, I say, there's what it says anyway. I don't change it to meet what the school I went to taught. You know one of the advantages of never going to Bible college? You don't have to feel no loyalty to them. <laughs> Amen. Uh, a lady asked me one time, said, Danny, where'd you go to Bible college? And I said, uh, well, uh, everywhere but nowhere. Uh, uh, physically, and she said, Lord, have mercy. People write me all the time and say, Lord, you ain't no Baptist. You preach like a Pentecostal. And I, I said, no, all the Baptists used to preach like this. I ain't changed. So uh, anyway, 
um, I'm a Bible-believing Christian, and I'm a Baptist after that, and Southern by the grace of God. I just kidding. <laughs> All, right. All right. Let's see here. Where do we get to? Verse number 17. Verse 17. Oh, my goodness. And he is before all things. And by him all things consist. So Jesus was before everything. There's that verse in Revelation that Jehovah's Witnesses used to believe that God created Jesus there. No. Uh, the Son was always with the Father. Even before the world began. And verse 18. He is the head of the body, the church. Everybody that's saved is in the church. Jesus Christ is the head. He's the head. Who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. Now that would be um, the firstborn of the Holy Spirit with a perfect body would be Jesus Christ. Those other people that come back from the dead like Lazarus and them, they had to die again. They didn't get no new body. He was the firstborn that come up like that. Why? That in all things he might have preeminence. Now, if you don't know that verse, I'm you hurting my feelings. Because you sit there and stare at it every Sunday. It's right there. In all things he might have the preeminence. Sometimes I have people say, Now, what does that say back there behind them flowers? Uh, you can uh, you can look at your Bible. That's where this scripture on the pulpit come from. I didn't have this made. This was Donated to me, actually. We'd never buy a pulpit. It cost, this is cherry wood. I ain't no telling how many thousand dollars that this thing would cost, but it was given to me. And uh, uh, it says, All things he, Jesus, might have preeminence. Now, they're going a little switch from doctrine to practical living. That, somebody tell me what preeminence means. First place. He's first place. He's first. He's first. They said one time over in Asheville, there were a bunch of little kids over there, and some, somebody come from up north, and they was down there and they was teaching. And uh, back years ago when Asheville was full of good Christians, and uh, they said the guy's in there talking, and he, 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 he's talking about the, uh, he brought in, they brought him in from the fire department, the police department, they were teaching kids about safety. He said, now boys and girls, remember, safety first. And one of the little kids said, up, said down here we put Jesus first. And, and that's exactly right. That's exactly right. Uh, I've, uh, somebody said, I've seen these Valentine's thing, thing, uh, where the, some of you, I don't know if anybody in here done it. I ain't got nobody in mind. It said, uh, uh, my Valentine, you're the best thing that's ever happened to me. Now, that sounds romantic, but that ain't true. Jesus is the best thing that's ever happened to you. Don't get mad at me. It's the truth. Jesus ought to mean more to you than your sweetheart, buddy. Amen. And then your sweetheart. And don't get mad at me. I know people say, you're my best friend. I get what you're saying. Truth is, he's your best friend. The real truth is, he's your best friend. Now, earthly speaking, your wife is your best friend. I'm not knocking saying that. I'm just saying in everything, brother, everything, he gets preeminence. And when I say all things, I don't mean most. I don't mean about. He's supposed to have first place in our habits. Is he first place in your habits? He's supposed to have first place in our, our dress. Is Jesus Christ first place in the way you dress? <whistles> Taylor Swift needs that verse. <laughs> uh, uh, but, you know, I want to talk about how come she got so popular all of a sudden. It ain't because her talent. I mean, come on, people. You know what she's selling. Uh, uh, ain't that dumb? You're adults in here tonight. Uh, and, and you anoint that with demon power. You got power. Uh, but anyway, um, uh, uh, you have uh, everything in your dress, in your conduct, in your lifestyle, in, in the church, uh, in, in everything, in all. In, in all things, he might have the preeminence. You know, it's getting harder and harder to do that. Uh, like, I've had ladies tell me, they said, Brother Danny, I know I'm supposed to wear a decent dress, and I know, but I can't find none that's decent. <laughs> well, the girls run out every year when we go to camp, and they say, we can't find no dresses that cover up our, our, our legs, you know, from here up. 
And, uh, and, and the devil's making it harder and harder and harder to please the Lord in everything. Uh, Christians are being persecuted. I've heard of one or two just this week that got persecuted at work. Well, one last week, I think. One this week, somebody was telling me about today where a, a, uh, a guy almost got fired from his job because he, he talked to an a LGBT person or another and, and told him uh, he'd be praying for him and got in trouble and said they're going to be fired. And they're saying, oh, you're, you're condemning it. All he said, I think all he said was, I'm praying for you. Now, what that means is, oh, are you saying I'm a sinner or something? Yeah, yeah, I guess. I, yeah, I mean, you take whatever you want to take out of that. But that, you know, are we living in a time when people are so touchy and so every little, you can't move without offending somebody. It's getting harder and harder and harder. To, I mean, the Lord wants us to witness and the Lord wants us to, then when you do, you get in trouble. And, and look, if a Christian don't say something at work, and then they all find out he's a Christian. They'll say, I, I ain't never heard him talk about it. If he does talk about how he's preaching, mixing churches, you can't win. They get you. They get you either way. If you speak up, they tell you you're, you're, you're violating their rights. If you don't, they call you a hypocrite. And I'll tell you what you better do. You better do what I try to do. You better say, hey, bless God. I'm going to try my bless, best to please the Lord. And everybody else just has to like it, lump it, bump it, or jump it, like Charles Worley used to say. Don't try to be offensive. Don't try to be a smart aleck. Don't be self-righteous. But at the end of the day, we got to please the Lord, people. All things, all things, He might have preeminent. The books you read, the places you go, where you spend your money. My goodness, that's a dictator. You're absolutely right. You're bought. You're not your own. You're bought with a price. If you're a Christian, you don't even belong to yourself. You don't have a right to do what you want to do. I don't have a right to do what I want to do. I, my body, everything I am and have belongs to the Lord, and I'm supposed to let Him have first place in everything. You say, well, Brother Danny, I could never do that. Well, you'll, you'll live in rebellion your whole life, and you'll suffer for it too. The happiest you'll ever be is doing what that song, I always have to sing that song, here's my hand, here's my feet, all, all, Lord take me here I am use me Lord pray, pray that prayer that's what the book says it didn't say for just a few fanatics or the preachers that sit on the front row or you know an old woman or, that don't know uh, what, how much fun she can have it, every Christian is supposed to have him preeminent preeminent um, the dove awards which is supposed to be all Christian had people living perverted lifestyle performing on the scene. Somebody missed it somewhere, y'all. Somebody's missed it. Preachers, preachers are God, are condoning stuff that the world condemned a hundred years ago. Uh, the the in how about in your living room? On your phone? How about in your bedroom? And your privacy. How about in your in your kitchen? How about at class? All the kids are back yonder, but how about at work? Uh, that in all things, he might have preeminence. Now, I'm not telling you to go into work and say, all right, you're all a bunch of sinners. You're all, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying, don't do that. Don't do that. I'll tell you one thing. You know, we go up there, we played ball to Y the other night, and uh, we stayed up there for a while, and I honestly, I don't feel right if I play ball with a bunch of boys for an hour and a half and then just see, see you later and walk out. I mean, I don't know if you can do that or not, but something in me says, you know what? These boys are going to heaven or hell. At least. And I saw I said, did you go to church yesterday? Did you go to church yesterday? And they ain't none of them got mad. I said, what if they did? That ain't going to kill me. Most of the time, they'll say, no, I didn't go yesterday. Or they'll say, yeah, I did. I said, man, you need to get in there. World's going to hell in a handbasket. And they'll say, it sure is. Uh, it's, it's, I want to I wanna put the Lord first. I'd be a lot meaner playing ball if I didn't believe that verse right there. Yeah, I hold myself back. Because, man, I want to trip people and grab them and everything. And I used to do that. I evened it up. <laughs> I think I tripped a guy in a ball game one night. Our little old gym was so little, we'd sit right here and it was out of bounds right now. And a guy come front and there and <laughs> I got in trouble for that. Uh, 
I just could not sit there and let him just go do a layup and beat us. And I got in trouble for that. I got in trouble. We'd holler to the referee and tell him her shoes untied and that's blind, you know, <laughs> and, and, and everything. I, I think that's fun. I think y'all be able to do that ball game. I do. I do. We first started that Christian school up there. I got in trouble. I thought, what? They said, no, you're not allowed to say anything to the opposing team. I said, why? We don't say, hey, ugly, you couldn't throw in the bathtub. You know, uh, that's, that's part of the game, brother. Uh, but I, yeah, I have to quit that because I'm a Christian. Uh, and, and I hold back because of that. They start arguing. He said, you're out of bounds. No, he wasn't. No, he wasn't. No, he wasn't. No, he wasn't. I said, okay, let it go. Y'all take the ball. See? Let it go. And sometimes at work, you have to back up and let it go. Even if you know you're right, the right thing to do to please the Lord will be just back up and let it go. Amen? That's hard to do. But there's got to be a bridle. There's got to be some kind of restraint on us. And our restraint is, in all things, he might have preeminence. If I'm getting done wrong, if somebody's cheating me, whatever, whatever. The Lord will straighten it out. I'm a Christian. I belong to him. And I'm supposed to let him have preeminence in everything. Work at it. Work at it. Try it with your kids, with your husband. With your wife, we're, don't, we're not made like that. We're, our flesh is rebellious. We're, we don't want to do what the Bible says. But work at it. Work at it. Uh, and everything comes up. You remember the little thing, what would Jesus do? And that got made fun of a lot and everything. And that was sort of a hippie fad. But really, it's not a bad, it's not a bad philosophy to think, what would the Lord have me to do right now? What would the Lord have me to do? If we just live by that right there, what would Jesus have me to do in this situation? About that neighbor of yours that you've been fussing with or something. What would Jesus have you to do? Think about that. That in all things. That verse said all. All. You know what that means in Greek? Everything. <laughs> you know what it means in Hebrew? All of it. Uh, all things. He might have preeminence. Amen. That in all things he might have preeminence. Because it pleased the Father that in Him, by whom He made the world, might have preeminence in all things. All right. Uh, now, verse. Look at verse number twenty. This is a great verse. Great verse. Wonderful verse. And having made peace through the blood of His cross, by Him to reconcile all things unto Himself. By Him I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. Now, great verse. Part just wonderful shouting ground, part hard doctrine. Part is, thank God he made peace through the blood of his cross. The Bible teaches about that daysman back in the book of Job. And a daysman, you might have heard preachers preach on that. I've preached on it. I don't know if I've preached on it since any of y'all. That's been 20 years ago, I guess. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll go back and do that again. But back in, in Job, there's a daysman. And Job said one time, he said like, here's what he said. I'll translate it. I'm over here and God's over there and I'm a sorry sinner and God's perfect and I can't get to him. There needs to be a daysman between us. That's in Job. I don't have the in the top of my head. You can look it up there. Uh, and he said there's neither is any daysman between us that might go between me and him. Now what a daysman was was like a lawyer. And there was a lawyer. He would go over here and talk to this guy and say, look, they're going to have to make peace here. He'd go over here and talk to this guy and see if he could get them together. Now, Jesus Christ was a daysman. And when he died on the cross, he got hold of a holy God with one hand and sinful men with the other hand and brought us together. He made peace through the blood of his cross. That's how we can have peace with God, through the blood of his cross. Did somebody get that reference for me? But well, it's all right. Um, the daysman in Job should be easy to find there. you got to... Concordance in the back of your Bible. Um, now, the hard part of this verse is to reconcile all things unto himself. Huh? Job 9.33 there, if you want to write that down. Now, look at the verse 20. We don't have no problem with stuff like this. You just read right over it and go on, but there's complete false doctrine built on verses like verse 20. See where it says, by him to reconcile all things unto himself? Whether they be things in earth, things in heaven? There's whole groups and denominations 
that teach what we call universal salvation because of the verse like that right there. See right there? Right there it says it. When Jesus died on the cross, he reconciled all things, the whole creation. That means demons, devils, the devil himself, all sinners. He brought us all back to God, and everything's cool. You say, well, that is what it said, Brother Danny. Yep, that is what it said. But it can't mean he brought demons and devils and those that refused to reconcile. You say, why can't it? Because the rest of the Bible teaches otherwise. There's where you run into it. You got to know what the rest of the Bible says when you run upon a verse like that. It read, there are, there's famous preachers who preach that eventually everybody's going to be saved. In the end, uh, God's going to wind up forgiving everybody and everything. everybody's going to live happily ever after. That's called universal salvation. And they have Bible verses that they use, like this one here. Right there it says he's going to reconcile all things to himself. But by when he means reconcile all things, uh, he don't, he, he's not talking about people who don't want to get reconciled. <laughs> when he says, all things, anybody wants to get reconciled to God can. I did. You did when you got saved. You got reconciled to God. And anybody can that wants to. And he is going to fix the planet. And he's going to fix the curse on the animals and all of that. Because they didn't sin. But uh, the Lord won't reconcile somebody to him that don't want to be reconciled. The devil, as a matter of fact, you say, how do you know that? Because the devil winds up in the lake of fire. And people reject the Lord. Whosoever is not found written in the book of life cast in the lake of fire. There's how we know. They don't want to be reconciled. God's not going to reconcile you against your will. Uh, so make sure you get them verses like that right there. Uh, you, you probably will never run into anybody living in this part of the country that believes junk like that. But you might, if you go to college or go to, if you're around somebody that's been, I don't know, ever travel around the world and they've heard some nut. Uh, talk stuff like that. You you could uh, you might could get that and maybe you remember that. Remember that reconcile don't mean reconcile something that don't want to be reconciled. Look at verse twenty one. And you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind. You remember that by wicked works. Yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable. And unreprovable in his sight. Glory to God, buddy. Shout on that, people. We was alienated from God by our old wicked, sorry, good for nothing works. Mm -mm -mm. Longer I'm saved, the more I believe that. The more I believe that there's nothing good in us. Nothing good in us. The longer I'm saved, the more I believe that. Uh, uh, it's, 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 it's a, the Lord looked down and looked down and seen all his wicked sin and he said, I'm going to fix that. And he put his son down here and let him die that whosoever will come. The wickedest, the vilest sinner can come to the Lord and be reconciled to God. That's how many you got in. You ought to shout and praise the Lord every day of your life. Every day of your life. Ought to be, first thing you do in the morning should not be look at your phone. The first thing you do in the morning should say, good morning, Lord. It sure is good. I'm glad you reconciled me. Lord of God, I'm glad I'm not going to hell. Hallelujah. Put me in your will today, Lord. Let this be a day when I serve you. Then you can get you a cup of coffee or look at the phone or whatever. All right, you get your Bible reading done. But listen, buddy, he reconciled you. He reconciled you. Brought, brought you back into fellowship uh, with God. In the body of his flesh, through death, to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. Now, you know what? You know what that means? One of these days, the Lord is going to present us holy, unblameable, and unreprovable. The devil will come over and say, Wait a minute, wait a minute. That's Danny Castle. He ain't worth a dime. And somebody will do him and say, Amen. Why, he done this and that. Somebody will hear say, Amen. And I, I'll stand there saying, oh, my goodness, oh, my goodness. Everything he's saying is right. Everything he's saying right. And somebody will step up there, and the Lord said, uh, hey, sir, come up here and sing that song for us. And they'll say, what sins are you talking about? I don't remember them anymore. When, and from the book of life. Uh, I think, right? They've all been torn, torn out. My sins weren't torn out of the book of life, but that's what the song said. Um, I don't remember them anymore. <laughs> that makes good preaching. Amen. That's good. You ought to shout about that. Okay. All right. 
Let's bow our heads in prayer. Every head bowed. Father, we thank you so much for all you've done for us. Pray now that you'd bless here this crowd of people here tonight. Thank you, Lord, for people that's hungry to know the Word of God. Now, Father, we pray right now in Jesus' name, the Holy Spirit will come upon this place here tonight. Bless all them kids back there, Lord. Let them get something from heaven. Let them all learn to serve you and love you and do right. Please get our hearts ready for the big night Sunday night. Fill this place full of young people and save souls. God, please, meet here Sunday morning, Sunday evening. Do what ought to be done in every life. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You're not at liberty to go. Uh, turn them cameras off for just a second. Amen. All right. Now.